YouTube is it going the goat house is back with a day two mock draft before day two begins uh, join us on Twitter for live pick by pick analysis for day two and three we have winners losers grades videos on the channel a lot more to come we'll have one tonight covering day two two a lot of good players left i'm realizing teams are going to get some steals some really good fits i, I love day two I'm, I'm excited uh the bills got quite a few options here after trading down a couple times um i think the most obvious option is adding a mitchell i mean it'll be a perfect outside receiver for them uh cooper DeJean is still is who's still available is a really solid fit it's a zone defensive back the bills is a heavy zone defense uh, I think you'd fit in at, at safety or outside corner for them. Um, but who else I think is a really good fit, and I've mocked it before, is Troy Franklin, who I think can kind of be that Stephon Diggs replacement. Uh, it felt like they knew they can get him by moving back, or they knew they were going to take maybe a second-round guy. But they did, they did risk it with a lot of receiver-needy teams, so that could point towards maybe DeJean or somebody else. Uh Kool-Aid McKinstry would be a fit, too. I think he can thrive in a cover two scheme, so it fits there. I'm going to go Troy, Troy Franklin. It was kind of what my gut was telling me they could do in the end of the first round, so that's what I'll do. But, yeah, I just rattled off some guys that would be really good fits. Uh, then the Patriots get a perfect option for their new franchise quarterback, Drake May, with Adonai Mitchell. That's a type of receiver they definitely need outside receiver here. Uh, the Cardinals... Um, I ended up going with uh, one of my favorites here. Uh, they, they could go – it's actually tough because they, they could go very well, go Cooper DeGene, but they're going to have to view him as an outside corner because I don't think they're going to use him at safety. and so That's why he dropped. Um, they could go Kool-Aid McKinstry, but I'm going to go Max Melton for the Arizona Cardinals, um, who I, I think is underrated. I think it would be a really good pick down here. I think a lot of these corners – fell because they fell in the first round so it kind of pushed some other really good ones back Washington I, I think they got to go offensive tackle there was some talk about them moving up and a lot of them are gone but there's some good ones here um now this is this was tough uh you can go Suomataya who is getting a little bit of buzz I'm not super high on him um I think Rosengarten would be another good option for them I think they go Patrick Paul from Houston uh, that's what I have for the Commanders. And then for the Chargers, I mean, they passed on receiver. It surprised some people in the first round. Maybe they had the, they had the plan of getting a really good second-round receiver that Jim Arbaugh is very familiar with with Roman Wilson. Uh, and the Titans, some thought they can go receiver in the first. So I'll go receiver here. Uh, they could go lineman again, honestly. They could go edge. Uh, but I will go at Lad McConkey. So add a slot receiver there. And then Carolina, I do like the fit of Cooper DeGene. I think he can play in multiple different spots in a Giro Evero zone defense. Uh, DeGene, a big zone guy, not a ton of man reps. Another reason why he could be available still. As you can see, there are some ridiculous players still left uh, because this is what happens in the NFL draft. Teams. Teams do it. It happens always because teams reach for knee, but then you got teams doing that, but reaching for quarterbacks and six quarterbacks going early. So it pu pushes the skill position players down. So it's going to be a wonderful day, too, actually. Um, the Commanders, um, a oh, really good, really good option, really good fit. This would be a pretty good haul for them. Marshawn Neeland, uh, one of the biggest risers for me over the last few weeks. Really fits in in Dan Quinn's defense at defensive end. So they get Patrick Paul Marsh on Nealon. That'd be perfect. And then, I mean, just beautiful for the Packers. Kool-Aid McKinstry, who I thought was a very realistic pick for them in the first round because he's that good of a corner. That's a good fit. They end up getting him in the second because how late the, the star corners went in the first round, it pushed the really good ones back. We got Melton. We got uh, DeJean. It, we're, it depends on where you think he plays, but I think all over the place. Uh, and then McKinstry falls to Packers. You could flip McKinstry and Melton as well. Uh, that's what I went with. And then Newton, Johnny Newton falls right to D'Amico Ryans and the Texans. So that is another solid fit. Pretty damn good steal as well. Falcons, it feels like they badly need an edge rusher after not taking one. Surprisingly, not taking Dallas Turner and surprisingly going Michael Penix yesterday. Um... So I'll go Adisa Isaac, who would be the next best available. And he, he's got some upside to him. Pretty explosive. Uh, then the Raiders. The Raiders, uh, you would think, go tackle. I was leaning Rosengarten. Um, got a few options here I kind of kept in mind for every team. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with Roger Rosengarten, who they plug in at right tackle. But the, the 
I really thought about Kingsley Suomataya and Blake Fisher. Uh, Suomataya once played right tackle. Blake Fisher and Rosengarten just did play right tackle. Um, all really good fits, but in different ways. I think Fisher and Suomataya in a similar way. Uh, it's just going to depend. Do they want – Rosengarten's quick, really quick. Do they want more of that type or do they, do they want like the physical dude – uh, that right tackle. I went with Rosengarten, who was getting some um, late buzz. I think he, people have been sleeping on him during this whole process. Uh, the Saints, this was tough. They actually can go with another offensive lineman while there's still some pretty decent ones left. They can go edge rusher. I can see them going a number of routes. They go receiver. I didn't really love the – there's some good receivers, but I didn't really love the receivers for specifically for them. Um Almost a too good to pass, maybe, because he's getting a lot a lot of buzz. Is Braden Fisk, but will he not be lengthy enough for them? That's a little bit tough of, of a tough one to mock. Uh, for the Colts, probably corner. I was leaning with one of the corners. And, oh, yeah, kind of an obvious one here with Ennis Rakestraw still there. I mean, he's worthy of a much higher pick. If he didn't have durability concerns, he would have been a late, late first-round pick. Well, the, corner, the good corners drop, so maybe not, but uh, possibly. Giants, um, yeah, they could go running back. They can go offensive line. They could go corner. They can go safety. I would really like Cole Bishop for them. Um, I heard that I'm more of a – I like Andrew Phillips. I'm more of, he's a, I'm more of a third-round grade for him. I uh, heard he's going to go in a second. He's getting a lot of buzz. But, again, I think the run on corner start. So, we'll go Andrew Phillips, guy that can play outside or inside. And the Jags, I mean, you know, wouldn't start right away – uh, but in the near future, just too good to pass. Jackson Powers Johnson, who was mocked in the first a ton, um, you know, just too good to pass, even though he might be a backup right away. Uh, but definitely very quality depth and a future starter. And then the Bengals, the Bengals went upside. They went traits and upside in round one. And I think they do it in round two again. Go oh, PFF's got I'm pretty down to listen. Mason Smith, former top recruit, has all the upside in the world. I think he's a stud. I think he's a little underrated, so the Bengals go that route. Would love Tavondre Sweat for them, but the off-the-field issues maybe pushes them down even further. Uh, for the Eagles, we have a couple picks for the Eagles. I actually went with Sua Mataya, um, very important ba- uh, tackle depth for them. Steelers, really good fit. I think this is, could who, could be who they're targeting, and Mikey Sainer still be a really good, really solid pick. Uh, I would love this for the Rams. We'll see if they do it. I'm very high on Brandon Dorless. I would love it. Uh, a versatile interior defense lineman could try to take over that Aaron Donald role. I, I would, uh, again, I would love it. Uh, Eagles, who feels like a, uh, a Vic Fangio type linebacker, is Edgar Cooper is the best one in the draft. But I think Junior Colson kind of feels like that Van, Fangio old school linebacker. Then you got the Browns, kind of looking interior defensive line for them. We'll go Chris Jenkins from Michigan. Dolphins, perfect scenario for the Dolphins. Uh, an incredible fit and a huge need at the right guard position. Just an incredible Mike McDaniel scheme fit uh, for Christian Haynes and his outside zone experience. Uh, Cowboys get the best running back in the class. Heard Benson can be the first off the board because he's very good. He's got good size, speed combination. He's healthier than Brooks, I suppose, right now. Brooks is definitely the best one. We'll go that route. Bucks uh, go with one of my favorites, Ben Sinnott. Uh, tight end they can use. I think he's going to go earlier than people think. Uh, and the Packers could steal Edger and Cooper, who's one of the best available, but didn't really have a – he'll probably go earlier in this, to be honest. This mock's not going to be 100% accurate. No one's is, but um, still available there. Texans, I want Tyler Newman. I think a pretty good fit for their free safety role. Uh, Bills, there's a really good fit I like for them at corner, uh, and that's TJ Tampa. TJ Tampa, is it's going to depend – on which team slash scheme he goes to. Love it with the Bills. I think he can be really good in the cover two scheme uh, because the knock on him is covering downfield, kind of combined with his speed issues uh, in a cover, and he's really good reading the quarterback and um, pressing, the, pressing the receiver, making him think they're in man and getting downhill, getting underneath, covering the flat. To me, that just says a cover two corner. Uh, so he would really fit the Bills. So there's going to be teams, if they draft Tampa, no matter where it is in the draft, I'm going to love, and there's ones that I'm just not going to like. It's really going to depend on where he goes. So uh, Then the Lions, a little tricky. I wanted to give him, them one of my guys, my, my favorite players of the draft, because Brad Holmes usually takes ends up taking some of my favorite guys, it seems like. But Keon Coleman is kind of that receiver they could use to replace Josh Reynolds. He's still there. I'll go, I'll go Keon Coleman, which I would like that pick. 
Ravens, I really liked Malachi Corley for them. Some really good fits here. Really like Malachi Corley, uh, but they badly, badly, badly need offensive line, and there's a really good fit in Notre Dame's right tackle, Blake Fisher. Scheme fit at right tackle. Um, he also has some upside if he plays guard, so I think worst case he slides to guard. He's pretty good there. The Ravens could use that as well. Uh, they, they're not afraid to draft Golden Domers, it seems like, in the past either. Niners, um, somebody I really like for them uh, is Dominic Pooney. Yeah, they have him under tackle. Dominic Pooney, uh, they could go Coleman for the same reasons too. Tackles, that could that'd probably play guard at the next level, but can fill in for tackle if you need them to. Uh, that'd be pretty important for the Niners. Could go multiple different routes here. And then the Chiefs. Uh, badly need a starting offensive tackle. They're, they're kind of off the board. Uh, could go. Yeah, I might've went a little bold without what I was going to do, but they could go Omega mega who was a little bit, a little risky, but, um, a lot of upside Caden walls. They can go Christian Jones. They can go. I think teams are going to have Coleman higher on their board. Ah, it's tough though. Cause I think he plays guard. I would like him to play guard, play guard. Um, but I could see him working out left tackle with the Chiefs. So that's what I went with uh, in the second round. So I feel pretty good about those. Of course, there's going to be trades. There's going to be surprises. No one can get a mock draft, right? We've got some really good players still available in uh, the third round here. All right, so let's quickly go through my round three. The Panthers could use a pass rusher. I think Trice would fit. Frazier ended up slipping through to the third uh, for the Cardinals. Commanders... We had them taking care of tackles, so they move on to interior. The Patriots need their left tackle at this point. So you get an upside guy there. Uh, interior guy for the Chargers. You know, hardball familiar with playing against Michael Hall Jr. A little bit of a tweener. He could drop just because of that, but he's such a good interior pass rusher. Giants get their running back in Trey Benson, and uh, Cardinals do as well, and Jalen Wright. I uh, like Malachi Cooley for the Jets. Kind of like a gadget guy they can use in their offense. Cowboys will badly need a center. Could go a couple different routes. I would like Chris Abrams drain for the Falcons. Receiver turn corner. Uh, Austin Booker for the Bears. So the Bears finally on the clock again. And they, they definitely need a pass rusher. Would they view Booker as a fit? This is where we're, we're, excuse me, where we're really getting thin on the solid pass rushers. Uh, Polk for the Broncos. Can see Sean Payton adding him. Um, Raiders at Laster. They need a corner. It feels like Renardo Green is a Dan Quinn type guy, like pure man coverage. He could drop because teams will be concerned at his, his level of play in zone, which is mostly used in the NFL. Braswell, which I seem to be a lot lower on than everyone else. Uh, but the Falcons could definitely uh, add a pass rusher that can drop in coverage there. Brownlee, I think a little bit of a sleeper for the end of day two to the Bengals. Uh, Mahogany, who I like a lot, uh, plug and play guard for the Seahawks. Jared Wiley's another tight end. I think it's going to go earlier than people think. The Colts, I would like that. Caden Wallace, so a high end backup for the Rams right away, could take over eventually. Uh, McMillan should go a lot earlier in that, too. People were sleeping on him. So Steelers could use one, a receiver there. Christian Jones, quality depth for the Browns at tackle. DJ James can play outside or inside, would like that for the Texans. Uh, then the, I think Mike Zimmer, you know. His defense uh, at the Cowboys w would take a shot on Tavondre Sweat, who actually has, I think has first-round talent level, just some character concerns there. And then Rook -ro -ro -ro, uh ends up dropping a little bit, be great for the Packers. Uh, Kamara to kind of replace Shaq Barrett for the uh, Bucks. Burton off the field issues, but extremely talented. Another receiver for the Cardinals. Buller, do the Packers play him in the slot? If they get him, can see that. D. Camarion Richardson heard, heard he can go a little earlier than people expect, so there's a corner for the Bucks, uh, a receiver for the Ravens. Tez Walker has the speed they look for. Um, Dejaron Taylor Demerson could play split safety, or he can play in the slot. That could help the Niners out. Cole Bishop, who I like, should go earlier in this. Would be a good zone safety fit for the Bills. Uh, Jags need that corner still. Got a lengthy corner here in Kyrie Jackson. Jonah Ellis for the Bengals. Maybe looking for another pass rusher. Uh, Steelers get their center in Norzad, who's a little underrated. Marshawn Lloyd. The Rams don't need a running back. Kyron Williams is a stud, but he has durability concerns. So you get another pretty solid running back, just too good to pass. And then Jaden Hicks could be a safety that kind of covers from the box uh, from, for uh, Dan Quinn. So I think a pretty good fit. And then maybe another one that's too good to pass. So um, it's kind of cut off. Sorry about that. But, um, yeah, that's my mock. Let's talk some best players available. 
So my best players available. Number one is adding a Mitchell 20th overall big time outside receiver. I think he dropped because he's team's a little worried because he's diabetic. Hell of a football player though. Number two is Johnny Newton, interior pass rusher from from Illinois. Um, you know, didn't wasn't able to work out at, at uh, you know pre-draft process, so maybe that's why he's dropping. But a big time player. Uh, number three, Cooper DeGene, who I actually like all over the place. Use him at safety. Use him at nickel. Use him at corner. Um, third best player available. Fourth is Kool Aid McKinstry. Big time corner from Alabama. Pretty scheme versatile, but I would love him in a cover two scheme, but he doesn't necessarily have to go there. Number five is one of my favorite players in the draft, Max, Max Melton from Rutgers. Uh, inside, outside versatility, athletic, long. Somebody's going to get a steal. Uh, number six, uh, safe pick at center, Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon. Number seven, Roman Wilson, big time slot receiver from Michigan. Does he end up with Harbaugh in the Chargers? Uh, Troy Franklin, who's a boomer bust guy, but his his high moments are so high. Um, eighth overall player remaining. Land McConkey, big time slot receiver, has some durability issues, a little undersized. Maybe that's why he's dropping, but a great route runner. Uh, number ten, Edger and Cooper, who's a big time linebacker um, that brings a blitz level game. Uh, to the football field there. And then some more guys here. Tavondre Sweat from Texas, I, I think, has some first-round talent in him. It's just off-the-field issues. And it's Rakestraw. That maybe has some first-round talent in him, but he has some durability concerns, but a fun co- downhill corner to watch. And uh, somebody's going to get a steal with him. Marshawn Nealon, a big riser for me, a big-time defensive end from Western Michigan. A lot of upside. Quick. At the same time, being physical. Mikey Sainer still, who is the the best slot corner, you know, depending on where some of the other guys play, but big time playmaking slot corner from Michigan. Brandon Dorless, who I'm probably higher on than everybody from Oregon, um, versatile, a lot of upside. I think he could be a Justin Matabuke type player eventually. Jonathan Brooks is the top running back in the class, would be ranked a lot higher, but is coming off that ACL tear. Jalen McMillan's underrated as well, really good route running receiver from Washington, was actually. Their best receiver two years ago, debatable, but over Roma Dunze, in my opinion, two years ago, it was injured a little bit this year. Um, uh, Disa Isaac from Penn State, another good pass rusher from from the New Lions, and Patrick Paul from Houston, uh, lengthy physical tackle. Keon Coleman, physical receiver from Florida State. Dominic Pooney, very versatile offensive lineman, could play guard or tackle. And Ben Sinnott is my number two tight end in the class behind Brock Bowers uh, from Kansas State. And the list goes on. We have a big board available for you guys. We'll be talking on Twitter. Best available. Like We'll update it. Who's still on the board? Uh, analysis pick by pick. So hopefully you can join us for all of that. Links pinned in the comments for our Twitter. Check out the videos on the channel. Definitely more to come. A lot of winners, losers type, video, type videos. Um, so yeah, check out our sponsors. GLD Shop, Liquid IV, Code GOAT for percentage off. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.